In this video, I'm going to show you how I built a super secret hyper training facility in Jurassic World Evolution 2. This was a really cool build and it started with a fun building challenge that I have for you to try out as well. Hello everyone, thanks for checking out this video. Please remember that the entire construction process of the super secret hyper training facility is strictly confidential, so please submit to our confidentiality agreement by subscribing and giving a thumbs up. This build, I started with making an island within the map that I'm building on, and I just created a fairly random shape, and then I challenged myself to not change that coastline while I was building, treating it as sort of a randomized island feature that the game sadly lacks. But I highly recommend that you try this out for yourself, because I have found that it's really inspiring and challenging, and you can get some really different looking parks every single time if you do this. You know, if you're getting like a little bit bored with the maps that we have. So with the island done, I'm starting with the arrival point for this super secret military hyper training base. That is quite the mouthful. And we're dealing with, well, it's super secret, it's remote, it has limited access. So I thought, okay, how do staff and supplies come in? Let's build an airport. Obviously, you could just use like the helipad arrival points and stuff like that if you want to save space on, on an airport like this. But I really love building this sort of stuff and I think it turned out pretty great. Now, what I'm doing with this back and forth is just to get those dotted lines down the center and the elongated stripes at the start and end of the runway. In hindsight, when I pulled out, the airstrip was a little on the short side, but in the end, we're not like going for 100% realism. It's a game after all. I sort of... I, I give myself permission to forgive myself for a little mistakes like this and just enjoy the building process. So it's just a single airstrip because it is, you know, super secret. So it's not going to have a ton of people coming over. Only vetted personnel can come over. So it's just a single airstrip with like this branch off to the side where the airplanes can taxi over to the hangar where they unload the supplies and, uh, you know, the newly arrived personnel gets off that's that's always like the story that i come up with while building you have a lot of time in your mind while you're building and i always just try to treat it as a real place and come up with little stories behind it uh, by the way speaking of the building process this building process took me a little less than three hours but a lot of that was also just thinking honestly <laughs> so if you're if you're looking to build something like this you can do it in a pretty reasonable amount a reasonable amount of time excuse me and i had a lot of fun building this so i highly recommend that you try it out i'm still working on the airport at this point i used a viewing tower as sort of like the um I always forget what these are called, like the radio tower, is that what they're called? Uh, but like the, the tower that has the overview where air traffic control is situated, that sort of thing. And I use the response facility building because it's the only building that has a hangar and I really wanted to have that look. I didn't necessarily want the helicopter. Uh, so if you are using mods, I would recommend that you uh, intersect the response facility with a different building to hide the helicopter and the helipad. For example, that uh, Hyperloop control station that I have over there, I'm pretty sure that if you angle that, you can get it to completely cover up the helipad and the helicopter. Um, that's just a little side tangent that I went on. I am having to add another <laughs> arrival point though, so that means a second helipad. It's not necessarily what I wanted, but it's what we had to do because of course the the airport doesn't actually function we need we need an arrival point now this this right here is where i cheated just once i cheated on the rule of not allowing myself to change the coastline this is the single time I broke that rule and it's because I realized that the fence was a little bit too close to the landing strip. It made me a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit concerned about clipping some wings. So I decided to move that over. As for the rest of the island, you know, I'm fencing around it entirely 
twice. So I have concrete fencing at the top and then a wire fencing at the bottom uh, lining like the beach of the island. So you have like a double layer of security, both for keeping the hybrids, which are super, super dangerous, obviously keeping the hybrids inside, but also keeping nosy people out. You don't want anybody interfering with your super secret hybrid training facility obviously, because that would be an issue and we don't want that here. The only people who are allowed on this military training base are personnel, of course. And there's actually a handy feature in Sandbox that you can use to avoid having guest looking people like casual plain clothes looking people in your park. When you first select a sandbox park, you can choose to have either uh, Jurassic World staff only, Jurassic Park staff only, or DFW personnel only. So I went with Jurassic World staff only, which means there's nobody coming into this, in, into this park with just jeans and a hoodie. They're all like in uniform with their helmets on. And I think that really helps with the end result. And speaking of personnel, what I'm building right here is the staff center so this is where you know they would uh, they would spend the nights this is where they would be on breaks in between their shifts stuff like that so this is like the the oh god I, the, the words are disappearing out of my head as we speak there they go oh no oh no <laughs> but this is just where they spend their off time I put it like right by the airport. That is uh, part for ease and part for security reasons. You know, if something ever happens, they're close to the airport for emergency evacuation. Now I couldn't completely uh, separate this staff section from the rest of the build. As I'm saying this though, I could have done something interesting maybe with the Hyperloop system or the transportation system. And this is just something that's coming to me. Like maybe I could have put this part on a separate island. But again, that's something I would have had to think of before I started making my island. So if you are going to try the, the island idea that I challenged you with at, with at the beginning of this video, maybe if you think ahead a little bit about this sort of stuff as I'm doing right now after the fact, then maybe you can plan ahead and make like a little secluded island that you can like attach to the rest of it with monorail or hyperloop for that extra level of security. For me, I personally just lined it with concrete fencing and pretended that there are gates there to protect our personnel. Now what I'm doing here, which is on the other side of the airstrip is a medical facility for our hybrid animals. Um, and the idea here is, you know, we're training these hybrid dinosaurs and part of training could lead to injuries, not just on the obstacle course, which we have, you know, they can slam into a wall instead of climbing over it, which could lead to injuries. Uh, we're going to have a racetrack where they could, I don't know, sprain an ankle, <laughs> who knows? But we also have a battle arena where we can test like the combat abilities of the hybrids. And obviously that is going to lead to injuries. So that is why there is a medical facility over there. Again, in hindsight, I probably should have isolated that a little bit more from the rest but I justified it um, by you know the the story of the fact that the hybrids will be tranquilized when they go out to that medical facility so they're not necessarily a threat but in hindsight I probably should have put that medical facility a little bit further away because as we get further away the level of security increases and there's less of a risk of the hybrids actually getting to where the people are. This is just a little storage section in between the airport and the rest of the uh, training facility. Uh, so that's just, you know, where everything would get unloaded and they have it ready for use. You could imagine that, you know, an airplane only comes and goes every once in a while. So we need a storage section off to the side and it's just a good space filler. I initially looked at like what kind of buildings I could use. If you're ever in a moment where you're like, okay, there's literally not a single building that will fit over here. Just make it a little storage section. I think that works perfectly well. 
up ahead, like behind the medical facility, is the hatchery. And this is where, you know, they would clone food for the hybrids. So, you know, I've used Edmontosaurus and I think Homelocephaly as our food types. Uh, but you can obviously choose whatever dinosaur you want. Also, what I'm going with... Um, I know that a lot of people always have the urge to fit as many dinosaurs in a single build as possible, but I don't treat the game that way because I build so many parks and facilities. I like switching it up with a build like this, which has only a handful of species. If you want to build a training facility too, but you do want more dinosaurs, you can add the same hybrids, but in different colors and treat them as different generations. Like a blue Indo is Gen 1, but a green Indo is Gen 2 because it has better camouflage, stuff like that. And you can also add more species, more herbivores for the hybrids to hunt and other carnivores for them to battle as part of their training. So you can add holding pens for Rex's gigas, agros, raptors, and flesh out this idea a lot more. And that's also, you know, tied into what I was talking about with the hatchery. You do need a hatchery there to bring in new species. Now, a lagoon might be an odd choice as you see me working on here, but I thought that part of the training should be seeing if they can swim. <laughs> so that's what the lagoon is here. Uh, it's not going to house any marine reptiles, although again, you could do that and part of the story could be that you're testing how well uh, the hybrids can actually fight in the water against a marine reptile. You could you could go that route. But I personally just went for basically a swimming pool kind of setting where they could test the swimming capabilities of the hybrids. These are the holding pens for the herbivores, which will serve as food. And it has a ranger station off to the side. Uh, again, um, just for uh security reasons but also what this park uses a lot is the idea that we can wrangle the dinosaurs because it's a training facility and at the end of the day training means that you have to come into close proximity with the animals so there's a ranger station by the hatchery for the herbivores but there will also be a ranger station right here which are the holding pens for the three different species of hybrids and the idea is that they would get wrangled, uh, like guided towards the different training areas that are in the middle section of this island. So we have our three pens and you can see that they all have gates leading out into this funnel. There's this little double gated intersection right here. I'm going to make some changes to that later on in this video. But this is how... With the help of a ranger team, which I'm placing right here, you can get the animals out of their holding pen and to whatever area of the training facility that they need to get to, with the exception of the racetrack. I mean, you can get them to the racetrack via wrangling, but I, I'm, I'm, I made a different solution for that. And we'll, I'll actually talk about that when we'll get to that. I'm just adding a lot of sand to this area. For comfort, I suppose. Uh, the animals are not treated ethically. They're treated sort of like war machines, I suppose. Really building off of that concept that they introduced in Jurassic World. And continue building on in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So this is not an ethical park. This is... Uh, no, this is not a right amount of space for these animals. But it's not really about treating the animals well. This is, you know, a shady operation where they are using the animals for military purposes. So that's a little iffy, okay? We're in a morally gray air area. Let's, uh, let's just accept that and move on. Now, I'm placing a ton of these around as, like, watchtowers. The advantage of those is that they don't need a path connection, so you don't get that awful notification at the top, which will be fixed by the end of this build. So I've built like their holding pen and now we're starting on the middle section of the island. And as you can see, I'm adding another layer of fencing. And what this actually does is it connects uh, the two ends of the island via this path in between those fences. So the rangers can go from one end to the island to the other without having to go through the racetrack, through the obstacle course, through the battle arena. They can bypass all of that along the coastline that way and i thought that was a pretty cool idea but also pretty necessary for that little bit of realism 
right here at the very start, we have this intersection where we can lead the dinosaurs in three directions. In the middle, inside that circle, we have the uh, the battle arena, and then on either side there will be a obstacle course and a sort of more natural habitat for testing and observation purposes. And then at the very end, what I'm working on right here, this is the racetrack. So the racetrack is just this elongated strip uh, lined with the concrete fencing. I've used the pylons as sort of the start and finish line. I'm putting viewing galleries on either side of it for observation, for viewing, obviously. And what I did, which I think works quite well, you know, if you use your imagination, I put that strip of invisible fence down the middle. And I'm just pretending that, like, that is a sort of track that has a lure, which lures the dinosaurs from the start to the finish line to test their speed. And now I'm adding just a little bit of path down the track to, to, yeah, to test the hybrid's speed. So that is pretty much the racetrack part of the training facility done. And now we're working on the obstacle course. So I'm sort of like making this winding path uh, that we're going to add obstacles to. Now, because the obstacle course is in between the racetrack and the holding pens, technically the racetrack could be reachable if you wrangle the dinosaurs along that like pathway that we made but my idea was instead to have the animals be airlifted to the racetrack if they need to race if they need to have their speed tested so that's why there's this there's this pretty big area this pretty big paved area right by the track where they can drop off the tranquilized dinosaurs you saw it like pass by probably um but we're just continuing with the obstacle course in terms of obstacles i i didn't have a lot of variation to work with so i placed down a lot of rocks and i'm also using some of the dfw decorations so i'm using the concrete barriers here and I will also be using the containers. I also use these things. I'm not really sure uh, what they would do, the heat detectors. I place a lot of cameras around. I place a lot of lights around. Uh, but other than that, I didn't really know what to do in terms of the obstacles. You saw me struggling there a little bit. I went with the containers um, and I didn't want to put the containers at the very side because then they, the animals could use the containers to hop over the fence. I also didn't want to use concrete fence as a barrier because we're pretending that the concrete fence they can't get over. That is the absolute unsurmountable barrier for these animals, right? So I couldn't use those as something for them to overcome. So that's why I went with the containers for them to jump over and the wire fencing for them to climb over, pretending that they, you know, they can get purchase on the wire fencing, but not on the concrete fencing for obvious reasons. And that's sort of the mindset behind that. For the holding pens, instead of adding actual water, I decided to add these fountains and sort of pretend that they are water troughs just to add to that unnatural look of these exhibits. Like there's there's nothing comforting about these. They're not they're not exhibits by the way. They're just holding pens. There's nothing comfortable about them. There's nothing natural about them and I really wanted that for the look of this. Now in the middle of this section of the island is like this big sort of L-shaped part for our research personnel and our hybrid trainers. And this part that I'm working on right now is a natural environment because the idea is, is that you do want to study these animals when they are exposed to a natural environment because, you know, thinking about the military application of the hybrids, you're going to be taking them out into the real world, so you're going to have to know how they behave in the real world. By the way, sidebar, this is again a little section off to the side of the racetrack, which is just an open space made for helicopters to be able to pick up and drop off the tranquilized hybrids for the racetrack purposes. But back to the natural habitat. This is where the researchers would observe the animals in a natural setting, but it's also where the trainers can be up close and personal with the animals and actually train with them, like teach them commands. And that's what this like invisible fenced off section is for. Uh, that way the trainers can be face to face with the animals, uh, 
they can have an unobstructed view of each other, be really close to each other, but the trainers are still safe during that part of the training. Obviously, as the training progresses, the trainers would actually go into the exhibit with the animals and uh, have an interaction with them that way. But at that point, they're supposed to be sufficiently trained that they won't actually kill the trainers. All of this, I think, will be much clearer during the full tour, which I will do in a separate video because there is just so much to show to this build. So I do hope that you'll stick around and watch that as well. I will get to it as soon as possible. So if you want to see that, if you want to see this build in its full glory, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, in case you didn't know, I have built many many secret facilities, uh, high security enclosures and stuff like that. You can find all of those on the channel. Like I'm doing this for all of the hybrids, but I've also already done individual builds for the Indominus Rex, the Scorpius Rex and the Indoraptor. Did I? I'd actually have to go back and check. No, yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> so you can already check those out on the channel for, for inspiration if you want to build something like this for yourself. I At this point, I consider myself experienced in building secret, high-security, military-esque facilities. And I totally recommend it. I think it's a really fun build and a really different approach to the game. You know, if you're like me and you've built... Hundreds of parks at this point. It's just a nice way to mix it up. Now what I'm doing right now, this is really just the finishing touches of the facility. Maybe it's a little bit too decorative considering the purposes, but at the end of the day, you know, when a lot of money gets pumped into a research project, I'm assuming that the people who come here are important enough or at least have enough of a uh, self-inflated ego that they want something nice to look at as well. So I'm adding some decorations around, but I'm really holding back. I'm not doing too much in terms of the decorations. And that pretty much wraps up this build. And here we have an overview of the super secret military hybrid training facility in Jurassic World Evolution 2, in case you want to recreate it for yourself. I, again, had so much fun building it, so I would definitely recommend it. And again, you can check out way more builds like this on the channel with sort of this high security military look and feel to it. If you want to see the tour of this particular build, I will be doing that shortly on the channel. So consider subscribing and ringing the bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss the full tour. I want to thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the rest of this mini showcase and I hope to see you again for the next video. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.